Welcome to the book club. I'm Christopher Norton, your host this time for our monthly, quarterly, every six weeks-ish show. I am joined today by Martina, Jordan, Chase, Jen, Jeff, and Caitlin, with the notable exception of the founder of this <laughs> book club, Manish Kata, who sent me a note earlier and said, I'm sorry, I can't make the book club. I'm traveling with my family, which translates roughly to, I didn't read the book. <laughs> when I was in college, I read the book, The Art of Innovation by Tom Kelly. And I know everybody has that one book in their life, but this was kind of the one that changed my life. It completely opened my eyes to the idea of how to run creative. And while it's filled with incredible stories about IDEO and the success that they had, they really break down how to well run a creative team and set that up. And it really became a blueprint for my entire career at two agencies and now at Potomac. For the book club, we didn't read that book. We read the follow-up to it called Creative Confidence. Uh, as I was preparing for this, I, I thought that the first book was a little bit hyper-focused specifically to a creative team, whereas this book was geared towards taking that creative energy and ideation and really infusing it into all different kinds of work and all different kinds of businesses. So to the group, I propose first, what do we think? Good, bad, indifferent, waste of time, love it. You hate me. Where are we at here? Let's level set before we, we start. Be keep, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, just be <laughs> honest. I enjoyed it. I'm just kidding. It's Potomac, Martina. We're honest about everything, good or bad. No, I liked it. A bit long, but I liked it. I liked yeah, it that was kind of in the same park. I really liked the themes and everything that it was talking about, but I felt like they could have shared that message maybe in half the pages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you could have given some more like real world, real life examples and storytelling. It was a little dry for me at times. A little boring. Maybe if they made it like a little bit more fun, engaging, silly. Added, so we need a yeah, cartoon book. A little bit more <laughs> pictures. Yeah, we would have done <laughs> good. It's Caitlin's turn. We're getting a graphic novel. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I just mean like I kind of like I would read it before bed at night and I would end up falling asleep pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. I was on the same boat there. <laughs> yeah. See, our recommendations take on a whole new flavor at Potomac. <laughs> Having trouble sleeping at night? Well, it's creative confidence. Yeah. Right there. I didn't need melatonin those nights. <laughs> Do you regret asking that question, Christopher? No, I don't. I think it's an interesting <laughs> perspective and I think people who are watching that should consider both books and we'll put both in the show notes. The first book honestly does give a lot more practical examples of the kinds of things that they did. They talk about how they worked with Apple to create the first computer mouse. They talk about how they got challenged by um, I don't know, one of the old like network, um, like in, in depth reporting shows to, to, they're like, okay, you're so good at making products better. Go fix the shopping cart. No one's innovated on that in 50 years. And they were like, okay. Um, and so they put their team on it. And what they came up with are shopping carts that have these little baskets in them, you know, like the baskets that you can pick up and, and take instead of a cart. Well, they designed a cart that has four different backs, baskets in it. So you can grab a basket, go fill some things, set it back in the cart, grab a different one. And instead of just one big tub that you put everything in. And what's interesting is at least at the Whole Foods where I live, they now have a cart that is made up of like three different small baskets. They're not detachable, but they basically took that idea and put it into practice. So that's cool. I thought that was interesting. But to creative confidence, you got something, Jeff? You know what? I'm just going to call on you first because you look like you're about yeah, to Yeah, well, what I was really thinking after hearing you <laughs> explain that was the reason you want everybody to have both books is because then if they lose the first one and they still have trouble sleeping, they'll have a backup. <laughs> it, I, it's, that's just my... There's some technical difficulties. I think we're <laughs> um, oh, he's back. Look at that. Oh, uh, what a bargain. <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad, but... <laughs> no? All right. We'll go to Chase first then. What was your favorite story in the book? 
Uh, starting off, there was actually a part where it was talked about like bring yourself to work. And since I was kind of the new guy when I was reading this book, obviously we've since hired three new people. But uh, you know, just diving into something and being comfortable in the space you're working in, and just making sure you're fully committed really resonated with me. And kind of helped me feel more comfortable, uh, you know, coming to work ironically actually online nowadays. But uh, that that part stuck out to me the most, I would say. So. Um, Overall, I did enjoy the book. It did put me to sleep, like everyone else was talking about, at, you know, at the nighttime. But uh, little <laughs> bits and pieces of it uh, weren't too bad. Hey, you're welcome for the nightly sleep, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> did you like the book away? We've book? saved people money compared for that. to the first book. Ah, gosh, you know, I I was actually not going to call on myself first because I've got to go first every time. But um, I kind of loved it. I. I, I, there's probably a bit of nostalgia in here for me because the first book meant so much to me, but there was, there was one, I'll just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna own who I am here. There was one story in this book. Um, <laughs> it was earlier on. I feel like, I don't know. I, I read this for, it seems like forever ago. Cause I wanted to read it first before I decided to choose it. Um, but there was a book about a, a child who had to go into an MRI ma machine um, for, for whatever particular illness that they had, and they were terrified of it. And they were trying to figure out what to do. They had this machine that they'd spent, you know, however many millions of dollars on. And instead of trying to come up with a new version of it or a new something and literally reinvent the wheel, they themed it. And they basically turned it into like a pirate ship thing. And you were going underwater with the whirling thing. And at another hospital, they did a, a, a spaceship version. And I'm, 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 admittedly like three glasses of wine in and it's 11 o'clock at night and I'm reading this story about a, a child. I'm thinking of my own son in, in, in this scenario and, and going from being terrified of something, which I've seen to not only being okay with it, but looking forward to the next time you get to come. Like I teared up reading that story because I thought what, what a cool way to apply creativity to a solution rather than just keep throwing money on it till you you land on something but to just step back and go no there's a way to there's a way to reframe this that will make it acceptable without having to do something new yeah. and it's not that it was like a huge change as in no. monetary change yeah it was, like, know, some, it was just it was like literally like little. some stickers that they put mm -hmm. like on the outside of it and it, it looked cool but yeah, yeah not a major Exactly. Uh, they, they didn't build a new case for it. Like <laughs> they got some vinyl, they got a vinyl wrap like I've been wanting to do to Jeff's RV and they called it a day. <laughs> well, exactly. that's, you know, like, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because I had a, a very similar reaction to a different part of the book. And that's basically there's a, a, a chapter called Spark. And at the end of it, um, it, rep, uh, it references some happy accidents. And um, I, I thought it was interesting yeah. because it referenced Charles Goodyear. And I have a lot of family members who are retired Goodyear people. So it's immediately, man, my ears perked up. I woke back up and, and started paying attention. And I didn't realize with all the efforts he was making, you know, 100 years ago or whatever it was, to come up with some way to, to harden rubber, that it ended up being essentially an accident. You know, he had a spill and the spill created basically what he wanted. And as a scientist, you know, you're trying to find a particular solution to a problem and a lot of times, right, this is what happens. An accident occurs and you have to be wise enough and open-minded enough to be able to recognize that, wait a minute, that's not what I intended to do, but it's the result that I've been looking for. And that's amazing in enough in itself. But the fact that you then have to take that and say, okay, now I'm going to make a multi-billion dollar business out of this happy accident. And so, you know, that, that takes a lot of stars to align and willingness to be open to something that you didn't expect, even though that's what you were looking for. Um, and then when you add to that, the next page referenced several other happy accidents. And one of them for a very important family member of mine, three weeks ago had an internal pacemaker put in. And I didn't know until now that back in the fifties or sixties, the internal pacemaker was created by an accident. So I was like, well, both of these things sort of, it's good timing. And, and I did the same thing. I teared up a bit and kind of went, oh, okay. I learned something. So there, see, Christopher, I gave you something good after making fun of you. <laughs> Always appreciate it, Jeff. That's the right order too. I Make do, fun, I, I do. I do. give something good. Yeah. Um, Sandwich it. Good, ugly, good. <laughs> well, and 
an interesting transition. Your recommendation from the last podcast was this StreamYard software that we're using right now, which yep. in and of itself was a little bit of a happy accident. We found this because we needed something to facilitate who charting. We needed something that would let us put mm -hmm. up a chart and, and have people on camera. And then what we quickly realized was, wait a minute, <laughs> what we have stumbled on is a way to produce all of our podcasts with very little need for post-production and just like that, we cut, I think Jordan, you tweeted it out earlier today. Like we've, our post-production time is like tenfold reduced since yeah, we started it's, it's using ridiculous. this. It's awesome. So yeah. another, another happy accident. Jen, what was your favorite moment in the story? Um, so for me being an ops, I think my favorite moment was um, the section where they start, uh, they say this failure, Failure sucks, but instructs. And mm. in operations, I tell all, you know, everybody, like, you're going to make mistakes. Nobody is perfect, especially, you know, operations, it's tedious, it's paperwork. But you really need to own those mistakes um, and learn from them. And I think that's not only in your job, but in your, in your personal life as well. And as our company has evolved, we are very checklist and workflow automation and all of those things have come from people making mistakes and missing things so i i for me that spoke to me as an operations person just you will make mistakes and it's okay but you really have to take a step back and and see the big picture and learn from it there was a lot of good points of this book it wasn't all bad um <laughs> <laughs> but for me that was the key to that was a really big point I think that's I think that's a great point, and I think um, you know I think true of of everything that we do here at Potomac. Mm -hmm. How much of an opportunity that we've had to learn from things that have gone sideways on us? Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. You get so much farther ahead, and not only as a business but as a as an individual, if you're willing to accept that you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, and it's not the mistake mm -hmm. itself. It's what you do with it, how you deal with it. That's what that's what kicks you farther down the line. Um, and, and I think if nothing else, take away that, that from the book is, uh, is worth its read. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Caitlin, what was your favorite story? So mine was just, um, the chapter in general about fear, um, and just coming to terms with the fact that just because things have always been done a certain way, it doesn't always mean that they're the right way. Um, and then just, you know, going out of your comfort zone, making things happen, embracing the failure. Um, so many people uh, don't act upon things because they're scared of failing and looking stupid. But um, uh, you can have a good idea all day long, but until you act upon it, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and he had a good tip for that. Uh, he said, if, if you want to do something new and you're scared of failing or you're scared of you know, looking like a failure to other people, just say, I'm going to try something out. I'm going to test this for a little bit. Um, that way, when, you know, things don't happen as planned, it doesn't seem like such a big of a deal. And um, you can learn off of those mistakes. And he said, just keep going and uh, trying as many times as you can, as fast as you can until you get the end result you're looking for. And that's something that I struggle with because I'm, I, I might have ideas and I'm just, you know, I get scared to put myself out there sometimes. I think that's something that a lot of people deal with. I also, just to add my feedback on that, I think that's a big thing here at Potomac. We always want people to question. Like, I know it's a, a pet peeve of a lot of people here to not say we're doing it because we've always done it that way. Like question, what is it right? Is yeah. it still right? It was right in 1987, but is it relevant today? And instead of just following a policy procedure checklist, like think outside of the box. And it is hard, especially with um, different personalities to really instill that. Well, and speaking of operations, stepping out of its comfort zone, be sure to join us next Friday for the debut of our op show <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> My perfectly Cheers. timed plug for that show. Uh, <laughs> Martina, what was your favorite moment from the, from the book? Um, well, there are a few that I actually liked, I have to admit. 
But one of the ones that I like the most, I would say, is the one that in the office in San Francisco, I think it was, in the bathroom, they like install chalkboards everywhere. Um, so whenever anyone had any idea or any like thought, they could just write it on. And I'm like that as well. Like you, I usually not when I'm in the bathroom, but when I shower, I get <laughs> random like ideas and i always like write them down in my phone so now every time i have to bring my phone into the shower because i don't know if i get an idea and then i forget when i shower um so that was something that i really liked about the book because you know it's i felt like it was weird that i was that way but now yeah. that other people are like that in other parts of the bathroom then i'm fine <laughs> well, it's more, more benefits of, of waterproof iphone 12. <laughs> I recommend a waterproof case. <laughs> that happens to me on a hike a lot. And I had gone on a particularly long hike one weekend and I got a great idea for a marketing campaign and pulled out my phone and it had died. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> son of a bitch, like looking around for like rocks to scrawl on. <laughs> like, I'm going to forget. So, yeah. yeah, great, great idea to always have a some way to document Something. wherever you are. Uh, Jordan, I didn't mean to put you last, but ah. you're last. So uh, all, all that ass kissing for nothing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love so, it. So um, my favorite part was the growth mindset that he talked about. And I think that's applicable with the Conquerist podcast. So Martina, Martina and I kind of showed up right when things started popping off, but you guys have been chugging along for two years and the growth mindset, what he talks about basically is we have no idea what our real potential is. Um, but the only way you get there is by putting in the work and just kind of embracing you and what you're capable of. And I think you guys did that. I want to say the average time that people quit a podcast is like seven episodes. And for two yeah. years, you guys chugged along yeah. five, 10, 15 views when most people would have quit after maybe two months. And obviously we're Jordan, reaping the benefits of that labor. That just means we're stupid, bro. <laughs> and we're slow but that's okay uh, I, I seriously jordan i just shared with christopher i think it was yesterday um i, I said i sent him a screenshot of like the middle episodes of our podcast which was only you know six or eight months ago and it's like you know eight views 15 views <laughs> right and a month or two later it's 500 700 1200 1500 3000 so uh and we're we're getting close to clipping a thousand subscribers so yeah, it's pretty well. It's gonna happen tomorrow. tomorrow. It'll happen today. It's gonna happen today. Anybody who's watching this by tomorrow, we'll better have a thousand subscribers. Yes. If not, <laughs> don't subscribe. There you go. We're at nine ninety eight. I know. I just close. looked yeah. while he was talking. I couldn't help myself. I'm like, yeah, oh, I did the same refresh, thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there. Uh, almost there. Well, uh, somebody's got to do it. Thank you all for. Uh, reading my apparently very long book. Uh, we'll include links to this in the show notes. If you are interested in one of our copies, send us a note uh, on our website. We've got seven of them here amongst the team. We'd be happy to send you a copy. And be sure to join us next time as Jeff recommends his book, RV Stories from Across the Western <laughs> United States, a documentary of nerds. <laughs> that will do RV it. stories for, yeah RV stories from the crypt yeah that will do it for the book club we'll see you back in a few weeks <laughs> ciao bye, bye.